All right, all right, guys, welcome back. In today's episode, I wanna go over how to turn this photo into this photo. And the way to do it is actually super simple, so I'm gonna keep it nice and brief. If you've ever taken a photo with your iPhone or with any camera for that matter, you know that when you take a photo and there's a very cool sky and you're catching the sunset, you usually get the sunset or you get the subject. You don't necessarily get both. So with this technique, it's a very easy way of getting your sky to be exposed correctly and your subject to be exposed correctly. If you look at our website, if you look at our Instagram, you're going to see a lot of images that have that very similar style. Um, the reason is, is that natural light is a beautiful thing most of these videos are filmed with natural light and when natural light is good wonderful we can do it but when it's not we need to know either how to fight the sun in order to get what you want out of the scene or you can use modifiers in order to create the scene how you want it to look like not what it actually looks like so in the photo that i showed in the beginning it's a photo of a professional cyclist sharon smith he actually lives across the street from us and i used to see him riding up and down all the time and so we started chatting one time and we came up with the idea, let's go up to the top of the hill and get some cool, you know, sunset shots. I thought it would be a cool idea just to shoot something different than weddings all the time. It's just, it's just nice to practice something different with a different subject. So one afternoon we headed up to the top of the hill. It was a blessing with how beautiful the sunset was. Now, by utilizing the skills that we have, we were able to get that cool sunset and also get him to pop out of the scene. And the way we do it is by using off-camera lighting. But rewind, before off-camera lighting even comes into play, what we do is we expose for the background. So in the photo that you're seeing right now, you're seeing that we were exposing for the sky and the numbers for that were 1 250th of a second, F11 and ISO 100. We were shooting that with a Sigma 14 to 24 and the Sony A9. So with those, numbers in mind you see that the photo is actually very dark it nothing you can't really see anything it's just basically a silhouette so what do we do next we introduce some lighting so what we used is a godox ad 200 like the one i'm holding right here it actually was this one and we used a mag sphere from magmod um, the reason for that is we wanted the light to be just a little bit softer um, i didn't want to put an umbrella or a softbox because i was by myself and if i did that it would become a parachute and that would be the end of this ad 200 we've already broken a few so we don't need to break any more by using the mag sphere it softens the light without running into the risk of it falling over as you can see in this image where it was still in the corner of the frame you can see it's right on the outside of the frame to light Sharon from the left side while I was exposing for the sky. I was on the widest setting of the 14 to 24. Um, so if you want to see how to shoot environmental portraits with a wide lens, uh, I linked to the video below. It's a very specific way of doing that because if you're too close to your subject, it's really going to warp them. So make sure you pay attention to that. And just to add to the numbers, because I didn't mention it before, I'm pretty sure since we were at F11, the flash power was probably at half power or full power. I can't imagine it being lower than that because at F11, you do need a lot more power to bring your subject out of the dark scene. If you want to learn more about off-camera lighting, we did post a video about overpowering the sun in, in the middle of the day, which is not usually what we would want to do, but sometimes we have to. So uh, check that video out. I'm also going to link it at the bottom and I'm also going to link it at the end. Now, once we got our exposure down and it looked good, what I always recommend is getting different angles. So don't get just like one shot and then go, okay, we're good, we got it you have the lighting down already. So don't move it, <laughs> leave it where it is unless you need to adjust you know, minor things, but shoot different angles. So by shooting different angles, you're getting essentially different photos with the same recipe. So you already have it ready, you already have it cooked, so why tamper with it? If the lighting is already set up, the numbers are already good, shoot different angles, shoot from the side, shoot a little bit, you know, slightly different. The only thing you don't wanna do is shoot from the same angle where the flash is coming from, because then it's just gonna look like on-camera lighting. What do I mean by that? So if I have my flash, on the left side right here, I would shoot from here, I would shoot from here, I would shoot from here, I can shoot from different angles from here. I wouldn't come and shoot directly from the same angle that the flash is coming from, because that's gonna look like the flash is directly on top of my camera, which defeats the purpose of having off-camera lighting. So that's a little extra tip, you know, shoot different angles, don't shoot it from the same angle as light is coming from. Also, another technique that we use is high-speed sync. Uh, it's not something that I would recommend doing when you're starting out, but it's something that I would recommend playing with once you get a little bit more comfortable with off-camera lighting. Um, I did post a video about high-speed sync 
and you can check that out also it's in our channel I'll, I'll link all these videos below so that way it's easier for you guys to find but high speed sync is when you want to blur out the background and you also want to have lighting on your subject as you're seeing in the photo right now so just to summarize and simplify it as much as possible expose for your background underexpose it really because that's that's what you want to do is make it nice and dark and crispy behind behind your subject introduce some flash don't shoot from the same angle that you're flashing from and shoot different options from different angles um, use different lenses once you have your lighting set up like i said play around a little bit let me know if you guys have any questions i have a few more videos in mind that i'm going to be filming but if you have something that jumps at me and you know that might be a cooler subject to talk about i'll jump on that first thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next one